Hey everyone, this is Mike Wave Sam. For the third video of my bootstrap tutorial, I'll be going over CSS. CSS, also known as Cascading Style Sheet, is a simple mechanism for adding style in terms of fonts, colors, spacing to web documents. It's crucial to understand some of the fundamentals of CSS to learn bootstrap properly. Upcoming will be my crash course to the basics of CSS. The line that you see highlighted is the gateway between HTML and our CSS file. Now in tutorial 1, like you know, we created style.css and we placed it in our CSS folder. Now if we do link href equals to that file name in the CSS folder, and we give it a relationship of a style sheet, we have the means of connecting our HTML index file with our style.css. First thing that we're going to go over are these divs. Now divs are created by the div tags, which is in the same format that we explained in HTML. You do a less than sign, then the name of what you're going to define it as, in this case div for div, then a greater than sign. And then you end it with an end tag with the less than sign, backslash, div, greater than sign. Now divs are just another type of division or section in HTML. They are block elements and they're used to format with CSS. Now you don't do this with div alone. You need classes and IDs. And these classes and IDs are used as hooks to connect with your CSS file. And then based on the name or class and ID in these div sections, then you can apply certain coloring, layout, or appearance changes. Now, let me just give you an example about this. You can write less than div, then you can apply a class. Now, a class always has a name to it, or an ID. So you set it equal to the name that you apply it to. Make it something reasonable now. So I name my class equals class. And then, this will be a, a kind of type of hook in connection with our CSS file. Now the CSS file can know that, oh yeah, you're talking about the div name class. Okay, what do you want to do with it? We can apply coloring and appearance changes to this div blocked element. Now for classes, uh, you can use the same class on multiple elements. So I could hypothetically create another div section with a different sentence with class equals quote class quote. Now for IDs, it's in the same format. You just do less than div, then you do ID equals the name that you want to give this div section. In this case, I just named the ID. And you can, and it's used for manipulation of this div block element. And then for IDs, the difference between ID and class is that you can only have an element with only one ID, right? So you can only have one ID it, it can only have one name, one word uh, for the ID. And then each page can only have one element with the ID. So I cannot hypothetically create another div section with my ID equals this ID name. So it's basically unique versus common. So how does CSS work? First of all, you need to write the section that you're manipulating. Then in curly braces, you can put these attributes. Now for the body, in these curly braces, I just put color colon blue, semicolon. And then the whole body turns blue. Now remember, the body was the entire content of our HTML page, and that's why the whole page turned blue. Now you can specify different sections, like a header one, and it will apply to all header ones. Now if I do h1 curly brace, color colon red, semicolon, header ones will turn red. And remember, header ones are in the body. So first of all, the body will turn blue, and then the header ones will turn red. So you can see the opening and ending uh, tags determine where the sections begin and end. And you can see the header tag turned red. Now we're going to start talking about classes and IDs. Now the way classes and IDs work is it's not the name of what type of section it is. It's the name of the class itself. So in classes and IDs, we're able to 
give a name to class or ID. So for class to change the attributes of a class, you need to first put dot, then the name of the class. Remember, I named class just class. And then in its curly braces, you can just, for example, change the color to a different color. And that section turned orange, as you can see. And for ID, it's slightly different. You need to put the hashtag or pound symbol before the name of the ID. And then inside its curly braces, you can, for example, change the color. So let's go over dot and then put the name of the class immediately after the dot to manipulate classes. And for IDs, you put the hashtag or pound symbol or the number symbol. And then you put the name of the ID immediately after that symbol. And you can put your attributes inside the curly braces and it will change that ID section. See, it changed to green. Now for any section that you've already written, like for example, we had some paragraph sections already written out with the paragraph tags, you can embed any section within a div section. And you can set that div section to another class or an ID. Now I'll give you an example where I set this div class to a pre-existing class condition that's already in our CSS. Remember, we told all the classes to change to the color orange. Now, when you surround our, an already existing section with a class that you've already manipulated in your CSS file, that CSS attribute applies to that class name still, if you set the HTML section into that class name. So since we set that paragraph section to class equals class, it turned orange. Now, I'll be setting an ID to that section to special P, a new an ID. Now, if we refresh the page, nothing would happen because uh, special P in the CSS file, we didn't have anything. So I'll set the font dash size colon to 30 pixels. PX means pixels and font dash size is just a font size. And it grows bigger after I save and refresh. Now, you can kind of see the pattern here where you basically set the attributes in this type of format in CSS and you set div class names and ID names in your HTML. You can also specify specifically what section in your div class section or an ID section what you want to change. So for example, if we want to just change the paragraph tags within the div section, then after dot class, we would just put space P. And I change the color to black and all the paragraph tags within that class div block element change to black. So you can see the pattern that we use here. We choose the type of thing that we're changing, colon, and then we give the value of what we want it to be, semicolon. Now if I delete everything in my CSS file and refresh the page, it turns to blank. Now we'll be going over some new attributes that you can set kind of giving you some examples so let's work on the body give it some curly braces and inside the body we're going to set the font dash size colon 16 pixels semicolon and the font dash family colon quote open space sans quote for fonts that you imported you need to put it into quotes and css and html has some default uh fonts that you can do like sans dash serif semicolon so as a backup it'll use open sans but if the browser does not have open sans it'll use sans serif and then we'll set the background dash color colon to blue semicolon and we'll refresh the page it's gonna be a little bit glaring blue background but the size is different and we're just gonna delete this so you can see it and I'm gonna set it to transparent now refresh the page you can see the font is different and the size of the font is different. 16 pixel font in open sans format. So one thing that I'm gonna do is change the background dash color to just background. It's going to be the same thing because transparency is the same between color and background. But the thing with background is you can set a photo as your background. Now for H1 section, we're gonna add font dash weight. 
so you get the hang of different CSS attributes. And we're going to set that to 400. Now for 400, it's going to look normal, so nothing changed. But if I had set it to 700, it would look bold, and 100 would look very thin. Font weight is just the thickness of the font, and it's good to know. So we're going to experiment with more CSS attributes. Let's experiment with this h1 header. We're going to surround it with a div class equals quote headers quote and end it with a end div tag. Now back to our C CSS file. We're going to do dot headers and then add a pair of curly braces and we're going to add text dash align colon space center. So what we're doing is we're just centering that h1 tag and we're going to make that sentence inside it or three words inside it centered out. And we're also going to add a text dash shadow colon for some shadowing so it appears a little bit bigger and it has that nice shadow effect. One pixel for horizontal, one pixel for vertical, one pixel for a blur, and pound 111 for a grayish color and then semicolon and you can kind of see but uh, since it was black it's kind of hard to see that shadow but it does appear bigger and you can see that that h1 tag is centered now let's experiment with the ul elements now ul if you watch the html crash course is an unordered list and it contains li elements and now we'll surround it with a div section and we'll make it into class and call it list. Now you can see with div sections you can surround multiple items. It's not just one. You don't have to limit yourself to one item. You can surround UL and a couple of LIs inside the div section. Now in our CSS file we'll do dot uh, class. No, it's actually a list. My bad dot the list and we'll try to change the list style uh, so that the bullet points do not show so list dash style dash type colon none semicolon and so these bullet points might be annoying to you so we'll get rid of them for you sometimes you just don't want bullet points and we'll save this refresh it okay so the reason why it did not load is because we need a target UL. Sometimes in the div section, uh, certain items and elements are not targeted properly. So you need to be more specific. And so we specified that we want to target the UL item inside the div section. And so we'll do some more extra experimentation. Uh, we'll do something called display colon inline block. So display colon in line block means that it will create that element into a block element that wraps around other blocks nicely. And display colon block will create the element into just a block like a paragraph. It's just a section right there on the page. You can do float left if you want the whole item to float to the left and have other items coming after it come right immediately after it. So if it's floating left, then things will come to the right of it, of course. Now for position, we can even change some of the position qualities. If we do something called position absolute, it means that it's going to be right on the page, absolute. Nothing will change its position, and things that come right after it will kind of pop over that position. So a good resource to always check if you're not sure of what you're doing and what these attributes actually do. And some people might disagree with me, but this has always been kind of a good resource for me. W3schools.com uh, with that link in the description. And you can just see all these different properties with their descriptions. So what we're going to do next to the list items is we're going to make them appear right next to each other. And to do that, you want to target the list items within the list class name. So we do dot list, and then we target UL for the unordered list. Then we space and target LI within the unordered list, and we do a display colon inline. Now display colon inline will change the list items to 
a section very similar to span. Uh, what that will do is it will not have that little space underneath and the list items will appear right next to each other as you can see. So it will be home, then right next to it, about, and right next to it, contact.